So there are a lot of film presets out there on YouTube, and most of the time they're not replicated after a specific film stock. So a lot of people will just slap on a film preset and it just ends up being a super desaturated and grainy image. So yeah, having shot film for several years now, um, I'll show you guys how I like to edit my digital images to look like film and you know some of the film characteristics we can watch out for. Yeah, disclaimer, um, there's definitely not just one way to emulate a film look. There are hundreds of film stocks out there and um, these are just for my observations. This video will be in two parts. The first part being in Lightroom and the second part uh, using the Hanser, which is a dedicated film plugin. Um, but yeah, let's just Let's just get into it. Okay, so I just got my three images in. I tried to choose three different images that were taken in different lighting situations or different colors. Uh, these are some photos that I took in London. Okay, so firstly, what I like to do is I like to change the profile. Um, I do shoot using a Fujifilm camera. And so um, I like to take advantage of some of the film simulations that are, are on there. So... I usually go into the camera matching panel and I like to start off with a base color of Astia. I find that it has good vibrancy in the blue but it's not too overpowering and I'm just gonna bring out the exposure for this photo a little bit. Oh and you'll notice that a lot of my digital images they are very underexposed and that's because when you're shooting digital you want to retain um, some of that highlight detail whereas when you're shooting on film you want to overexpose so you can retain some of that shadow detail but yeah some of the, these photos are shot uh, one to two stops under just to retain that detail but gives you lots of flexibility to edit in post so I'm just gonna bring the exposure up and I mean overall that looks great already but um, what I usually like to do is I like to use um, some of these presets by Jamie Windsor. Um, I've tried a lot of film presets out there and um, a lot of them I'm not super happy with but I found that with Jamie Windsor's Kodak Portra, um, well his, specifically his 3.2 Kodak Portra presets, I really like them. I think they're pretty flexible. Uh, they are pretty accurate to the film stock. Um, I really like um, the Portra 400 natural color preset. I think it gives a good amount of warmth um, in the highlights and it's not too drastic. Okay, and once I apply that, I like to, you know, tweak around um, with the exposure. So I think I'm going to raise the shadows just a bit more to get some more dynamic range uh, within the photo. Um, what I also like to do when I'm editing is to enable profile corrections so that um, you can fix any kind of distortion and, or warping. I primarily shoot with a 23 f2. They don't have the lens on here so I usually just put on the Fuji X100F because it also uses a 23 millimeter lens. So sometimes um, when I'm using this preset, I do find the grain to be a bit much. I like to start from scratch just to see where we're at. Within the preset package, you can find a different amount of grain like this. 35mm, 35mm plus, and even more. I usually like to put the lowest amount of grain. So the thing about grain within Lightroom is that it's just a unified grain structure throughout the entire photo. Um, realistically, with film, um, the grain density is different within um, the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. And you can't control that within Lightroom, but you can in Dehancer, and that's what kind of separates them along with other features as well. But for now, um, I'm just going to put a low amount of grain. What I've also been doing recently is I like to crop my photo into a 4x5. I don't know, overall I just prefer that format. I find that 3x2, um, that ratio is a bit too wide for me. Okay, overall this is looking pretty good. Um, I think to get some of that haziness or that bloom that you see on film, what I like to do is I like to go into this panel here and I'm going to lower the texture by a little bit and I'm going to decrease the clarity. I don't like to go um, under 5 or over 5 on the clarity or else it's just 
a bit too much, so I'm gonna stick with that. Okay, so see the before, after. You see there's a little bit of blue um, within the highlights here. And if you really want to make a bloom even more, you can lower the dehaze. It's a bit much, so I'm just gonna leave it as it was. Lastly, what I like to do is add a bit of a vignette. And now on shooting film, you'll see a vignette more, uh, more so on consumer cameras like disposable cameras and cheaper end cameras. Um, kind of add to that imperfect look because when you're shooting film, it's usually there's like a nostalgic, imperfect quality to it, and that's what I'm trying to achieve here. So I'm just gonna add a little bit here. Okay, so here's the before and after. Okay, um, I'm just gonna apply the same settings as before so we don't have to go through the entire process. I think overall this looks pretty good. I'm just gonna lower the exposure a little bit. Fix that cropping. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good. Um, yeah, most of the time I'm just tweaking the exposures here. Um, sometimes I'll lower the highlights. Okay, um, so usually with film, um, what you want to do is that you make sure that you retain detail in the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. Because film tends to have a much larger dynamic range than digital. So you want to make sure that none of your photo is blowing out or is super underexposed. Um, just make sure they're all relatively balanced. But that doesn't mean you can't have any like dark shadows in your photos or bright highlights. Um, just saying, usually there's a better um, dynamic range there. I think like with film, um, the highlights tend to be pretty bright. But um, just make sure that they're not blown out, which is why I usually like to keep my whites pretty low, just so they're not super, super white. Okay, so here's the before and the after. And now lastly, on a third photo, I'm just going to apply the same settings. I'm going to fix the cropping a bit. I love that pigeon over here. Just chilling. But yeah, uh, usually with digital pictures, the greens uh, are usually off onto the yellow side. Um, I think with film, it usually tends to make it a little bit more cooler, um, which is what I'm going to do here. And the fan is just going off on my computer. Okay, so I like to make them pretty cool. And sometimes I will desaturate those greens. Um, usually with like consumer film stocks, um, you have a little bit more vibrancy in those greens. And like with more professional film stocks, um, they're usually a little bit more desaturated. So film stocks like Portra 400, um, they'll tend to desaturate those greens. But yeah, it really just depends on what kind of look that you're going for. But I think like with this photo, I'm going to keep some of that vibrancy just because it matches kind of like the youthfulness and playfulness of these um, children here. Maybe it's a little bit too cool. Yeah, I think we can even warm up this photo a bit. Bring up that exposure. Um, you see some of that detail is getting lost in the highlight, so I'm just going to bring that down. Um, yeah, so if you look at the before, you can see how sharp the photo is and when I'm editing, I usually like to soften it up. Kind of makes it a little bit more imperfect. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, let's take these over to the enhancer and um, add in some more of that film details.